thank uh, President Tinubu for having invited us for his hospitality, the hospitality of the people of Nigeria. As you are aware, this is uh, the second summit in 10 days that we have organized on Niger. And this is a, a critical uh, problem we have to solve. As you are aware, uh, ECOWAS has uh, taken uh, many uh, decisions in the past, legal and factual, about coup d'etats. And uh, the community has always uh, condemned coup d'etats. And coup d'etats have happened in many countries in the sub region. ECOWAS has entered in, uh, in the past in Liberia, in Sierra Leone, recently in Gambia, in Guinea-Bissau, and today we have uh, a similar situation in Niger. I'd like to say that ECOWAS cannot accept this. This is not a matter of Nigeria against Niger, not at all. The decision that we have made today and I hope it will be implemented immediately, is a decision of ECOWAS. All the head of states think that we have tried dialogue with the push of Niger. We have sent delegation. Niger's junta threatened to kill President Mohamed Bazoum if neighboring countries attempt any military intervention to restore his rule, two Western officials said. Representatives of the junta reportedly told U.S. Undersecretary of State Victoria Nuland during her visit to the country this week that they would kill Bazoum if a foreign intervention was attempted. A Western military official told the Associated Place, speaking on the condition of anonymity because of the sensitivity of the situation. A U.S. official confirmed that account, also speaking on the condition of anonymity because the official was not authorized to speak to the media. The officials spoke to the AP shortly before the West African bloc ECOWAS directed the activation of standby force for possible use to restore democracy in Niger. ECOWAS, the economic community of West African states, had given military leaders a deadline of this past Sunday to reverse the coup. Following the Sunday deadline's expiration, the Nigerian military closed the country's airspace, citing the threat of intervention as the reason. The military also pledged to defend the country from any foreign attack. Meeting in Abuja on Thursday of ECOWAS leaders lasted more than four hours and took place behind closed doors. Leaders from 11 ECOWAS member states evaluated the regional bloc's position on the socio-political instability in Niger, where President Mohamed Bazoum was ousted last month. ECOWAS directed the Committee of the Chief of Defense Staff to immediately activate a standby regional force. The West African bloc also upheld measures taken against Niger's junta, including border closures, travel bans, and asset freezes on individuals undermining the restoration of constitutional order. Omar Aliu Toure is the president of the ECOWAS Commission. All diplomatic efforts made by ECOWAS in resolving the crisis have been defiantly repelled by the military leadership of the Republic of Niger, order the deployment of the ECOWAS standby force to restore constitutional order in the Republic of Niger. It is the second meeting by the heads of state since July 26th, when soldiers from Niger's presidential guard seized power from Bazoum, the country's democratically elected leader, saying Niger was descending into economic and security chaos under his administration. Bazoum has since been held hostage. ECOWAS Thursday condemned his continued detention. ECOWAS also warned member states against taking actions that directly or indirectly hinder a peaceful resolution of the situation in Niger, saying there will be consequences. Nigerian President Bola Tinubu is also ECOWAS's chair. He said the road ahead will not be easy. If we don't do it, no one else will do it for us. The road ahead will undoubtedly 
have challenges, but I firmly believe that with our collective resolve, we can navigate these obstacles and chart a path towards lasting peace and prosperity for Nigeria. West Africa is seeing a wave of military takeovers. The coup in Niger is the seventh in three years. On July 30th, Airquas issued a seven-day ultimatum to the military leaders to restore power to Bazoum, but the junta said it would not back down. The regional force has seen opposition to its threat to use military force in Niger, despite the slim chance of a diplomatic resolution to the political conflict. Mali and Burkina Faso last week pledged their support for Niger's junta and warned against any intervention by regional forces. This week, Niger's military leaders rejected meetings with delegates from the African Union and a high-ranking U.S. official. Nigerian security analyst Senator Irebu says ECOWAS faces a tough decision. Failure to act in case of Niger may be the last boundary before the domino will fall because uh, there seems to be a trajectory. And Niger is just a neighboring country to Nigeria. And uh, the fear is that if Niger get away with it, and it's a growing pattern, time will come, uh, other countries are feeling threatened already. But Irebu says a military invasion will have severe consequences. Nigerian troops are expected to make up the bulk of an ECOWAS force. Timothy Obiezu for VOA News, Abuja, Nigeria. A political analyst says he thinks a peaceful resolution of the Niger crisis may still be possible. But Ibrahim Khan says the economic community of West African states ECOWAS is also determined to stop the proliferation of coups in the sub-region. This comes as ECOWAS Thursday order a standby force to restore constitutional order in Niger. Khan tells me that even though the military junta has mobilized the population, it also realizes that there is little or no support in Africa for its coup. It's quite interesting to see that in less than one month, ECOWAS met twice to discuss the situation of a particular country where uh, the military have taken power over the civilian. This shows that ECOWAS is uh, really keen to stop the proliferation of coup in the region and also that there is a seriousness about really trying to find solutions that will respect not only the normative framework of uh, the region but also that will help the country to sort out its problem peacefully. I think when we last spoke, you also mentioned this idea of diplomacy. Do you think uh, diplomacy can work or do you think ECOWAS has crossed the, what we call, I would say, the Rubicon with Thursday's declaration? I think it can work. The fact that uh, yesterday the president of the Junta received the traditional leader of Nigeria, the Emir of Kano, that shows that at least now they are more open to conversation with uh, ECOWAS about the situation. I think they're also realizing that despite the fact that they've mobilized people in the country, they're mobilizing the military in the region, there is no support to their action in Africa. Let's assume that ECOWAS decides to go ahead with the military intervention and the objective is to restore Bazoum to power. Wouldn't such operation put Bazoum's life in danger? Well, probably his life is already in danger at the moment because he's in the hand of the military. But I have to also say that uh, in Niger, you have more than 3,000 foreign troops in the country with a lot of equipment uh, that will help uh, to have intelligence on many, many things. A surgical uh, intervention is still possible with the help of the American and the French. But I think ECOWAS is uh, getting ready to put more pressure on the military because I think if the military knows that people are ready at the border for any type of action and that they know that they don't have many, many supporters, you know, when you look at the the size of the army, you look at the size of the country, 
it's quite difficult for the military to succeed in any circumstances. And uh, what will happen in terms of action if it happens? Because I think that this military are really very uh, people who also understand the language, the military language. So they, they, they will give up at the right time. And uh, we will come back to the reality. It will come back to a system whereby if they can't reinstate Bazoum, they will organize elections, they will do things that will help to return to constitutional order. Ibrahim Khan is a Senegalese political analyst. He was speaking with us from the capital, Dakar. In Liberia, the main opposition unity party is accusing the ruling Coalition for Democratic Change, the CDC, of instigating a violent attack that took place Thursday during its campaign event, leaving several unity party supporters injured. The CDC has denied its supporters disrupted and attacked opposition supporters. In a statement, the CDC said it was pre-approved to campaign on Thursday in two districts of the capital, Monrovia. Liberia votes on October 10 this year in presidential and legislative elections. Mohamed Ali is the official campaign spokesperson for the opposition unity party. He tells me that his party will respond in kind the next time it is attacked by supporters of the ruling CDC. On Wednesday, which is August 9, the unity party campaign announced that its tender bearer was going to its campaign headquarters in Sinko to announce the full campaign team. And in that vein, we also encourage our partisans to assemble and welcome our standard bearer at the party campaign headquarters. To our utmost surprise today, when we got ready to go, there was a huge traffic. It was impossible. And later on, we were watching on online TV where uh, supporters of President Weah's CDC party had gathered and they began to attack our supporters. They did not stop there. They went as far as reaching our campaign headquarters and wounded some of our people. They attacked us. They beat some because we have planned in accordance with the Farmington Declaration not to engage in any form of violence. Um, this is not the first time on the opening day of campaign, President Weah's party to casket bearing the pictures of our standard of former Vice President Joseph Boakai, which is in clear violation of the uh, Farmington Accord that we signed to keep the peace. They attacked some of our supporters. They brutalized our District 9 women coordinator. The police were fully informed about our activities today. We did not see the police officers until the CDC had perpetrated violence against our people. And we have made clear that moving forward, we will use every means possible to protect the lives of our supporters and well-wishers since the police has not been able to provide such protection for us. Mr. Ali, let me ask you, because the CDC says your party ignore their campaign schedule and you went ahead to schedule your event. Where is the truth? This is a complete lie. In the first place, when you have campaign activities, the Elections Commission will inform the other parties. But besides that, we were not involved into district-wide campaign activities. Our activities were confined at our campaign headquarters. Even if the CDC was having a program that could not have interfered with our activities, and it is a clear indication that no party or supporters of other parties are to interfere with activities of a particular party at their headquarters. This is the second time that the CDC has encroached on our headquarters and they have brutalized our people. And that's why we want to make emphatically clear that any form of violence again against our supporters, our well-wishers, our sympathizers, we will protect our peoples.